Welcome to Nadal and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. A full restoration in water supply to affected areas expected over a 24-hour period, according to WASA. A sharing of expertise between the Trinidad and Tobago and U.S. military bodies as Black Hawk helicopters arrive for joint training. And more than 2,000 youth training and employment partnership program trainees graduate. Thank you for joining us. Emergency repair works to the ruptured 48-inch Carony North Transition Main located along the westbound lane of the Churchill-Roosevelt Highway in the vicinity of Trin City Mall continued overnight. According to the Water and Sewage Authority, the repair works are expected to be completed on Thursday at midnight with a full restoration in supply to affected areas expected over a 24-hour period in accordance with established supply schedules. The main was ruptured during piling works being undertaken by a contractor hired by the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure at around 2.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Areas affected include parts of North and East Trinidad. An estimated 300 to 400,000 consumers in North Trinidad have been negatively affected by the rupture of the 48-inch ductile iron carry North transmission main. That is effectively from 2.45 p.m. on Wednesday, 5th February. These consumers have been without a direct supply. Areas affected include St. Augustine, Curep, Chamfle, Mondo, Farm Road, St. Joseph, Pittiburgh, Valsin South, Bamboo Settlement, Mount Hope Hospital, Arangues, Sawa, El Sicoro, Santa Cruz, Mova, Barataria, Lavantil, Beetham Gardens, Gonzales, Belmont, Porus Spain, Cascade, Cocorite, and the Western Main Road, St. James. Customers are advised to manage their water use efficiently and WASA has stated that a limited truck-borne water service is available with priority given to health institutions, special homes and schools. Now for further information, customers are encouraged to contact WASA's customer call centre toll-free at 800-4420 or 800-4426. In other news, if you happen to see a Black Hawk helicopter flying over your area within two weeks, no, it's not the filming of a movie, but members of the Trinidad and Tobago military participating in training with visiting American soldiers from the U.S. Army. The exercise is said to be part of a sharing of expertise between the two military bodies. Two Black Hawk helicopters arrived in Trinidad and Tobago for a joint exercise between the U.S. and Trinidad and Tobago Protective Services. The aircraft arrived via C-17 transport plane at the Piaco International Airport on Wednesday. U.S. Embassy Public Affairs Officer Alexander McLaren says the unfolding and assembling exercise required a 10-man crew to get the aircraft ready for flight. The two helicopters arrived yesterday on the C-17 transport plane you can see on the, on the tarmac behind you. They were unloaded and now we're seeing them being unfolded. This takes about an hour. You can see behind us each plane or each helicopter has a 10-man ground crew who are setting up the rotors, who are unfolding the wings. After that, the helicopters will be inspected from nose to tail to make sure that they've been unfolded correctly. Then they'll be doing electronics and ground testing before finally taking off once they're sure that the planes are that the birds are ready to go. On arrival, the aircraft was unfolded and assembled by crew members. This unique aircraft is used as part of the United States Army's Utility Tactical Transport Aircraft System and was first used by the U.S. Army in the combat during the invasion of Grenada in 1983. Since then, it is commonly used in a number of high military safety operations in a tackling of terrorism and narcotic interception around the world. Officer McLaren explains the special requirements in the operation of this chopper. Each helicopter, of course, requires a lot of support they, and a lot of love. They came with 80,000 pounds of equipment, including spare parts, including um, and including everything that the ground crew needs in order to service them on the, to service them while they're here. Uh, they ended up maxing out the capacity of the transport plane that they came on. The aircraft is capable of carrying 10 to 12 armed soldiers while the training exercise is said to involve the sharing of expertise between the two military bodies with focus on air operations during a two-week period. 
Over 50 members of the Special Operations Command South, SOC South, will participate in the exercise, which will take place in rural and urban communities across Trinidad. This is part of a long planned series of exchanges and training exercises. This one, this one was planned and carded several months ago. The last exercise was in December, and there'll be more, and there'll be, I believe, two or three more planned in 2014. There'll be training for a variety of missions, including counterterrorism and I, I assume including drug interdiction. But again, it's a training mission. They're not here to actually be uh, embarking on anything like that. The facilitation of this training is said to represent mutual respect and shared interest between the U.S. and Trinidad and Tobago. The U.S. has carried out similar training exercises and humanitarian assistance work in other countries in the region under this program. Kimberam Kalawan, News 4. News 4 continues right after the break. Stay with us. Minister of Local Government, Senator the Honorable Marlene Kudry is calling for the Elections and Boundaries Commission to have greater powers in the overseeing of election campaign financing. As debate in the Senate heats up on whether legislative framework should be introduced to govern the financing of election campaigns, Senator Kudry says, firstly, the remit of the Elections and Boundaries Commission needs to be reviewed. Addressing the House in a recent Senate sitting, Senator Kudry is questioning the validity of the EBC in currently ensuring election campaign financing obligations are met. To oversee campaign financing, it may be useful to strengthen the Elections and Boundaries Commission, as also indicated, and they must have the powers to tighten controls on spending by parties and by candidates, substantially strengthen their powers in the area of transparency of donations. Mr. President, you, in terms of the, the EBC's rules, $50,000 the limit is the limit for a general election and 30000 for a local government election. But we just have to look around at what happens during our local campaigns, and we know that it is a joke in terms of the cost of things now and in terms of the, the skill of our local politicians to always clinically submit these reports to the EBC saying they have, after elections, certifying that they have spent 50000 and $30,000 respectively on an election campaign and we know differently. While she sees the need for legislation to govern election campaign financing, Senator Kudre says the legislation may possibly infringe on citizens' constitutional rights. Legislative measures on campaign financing must respect the constitutional rights of party members to contribute to the party to which they belong. Legislative scrutiny of campaign financing should not be done in a manner which contradicts the enshrined provision of our Constitution. And Mr. President, one such provision at Section 4 of the Constitution gives citizens the fundamental right as a citizen to be a member of a political party. There is nothing in the Constitution or any other law which restricts the level of direct or indirect monetary contributions a member of a party can make to his or her party. To pass any law to contemplate the contrary would tantamount to fettering citizens' rights, citizens and their constitutional rights, and as well as we know, the passage of such a law would require constitutional reform. Senator Kudry, however, emphasizes the importance of transparency in campaign financing, noting that it assists in preserving democracy in any country. The motion before the House seeks to propose that a joint select committee be appointed to propose a legislative framework governing financing of election campaigns and subsequently submit a report to both houses within six months. Debate on the motion continues on Tuesday, February 11th, 2014. Gregory McBurney, News 4. The Youth Training and Employment Partnership Program is making immeasurable contributions to the development of Trinidad and Tobago. This is the belief of Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, Senator the Honorable Fazal Karan. More than 2,000 young men and women have become the latest to benefit from training received at white facilities across the country. The 2,300 young people celebrated their graduation from White Up with a function held at the Center of Excellence in Makoya. In attendance at the ceremony were Tertiary Education Minister Fazal Karim and Chairman of White Up Chanda Gupta Supersad. 
Speaking to the media at the function, Minister Karim says given the cost of white up, its contribution to society in return can be seen as an international success story. I think that WITEP has earned its place in, as an international project, of, as a success story. And I indicated today that the graduates today, the over 2,300 graduates who uh, we have graduated this evening, adds to the 176,000 graduates since this program came into being in 1988 uh, at a cost of over $755 million uh, to the taxpayer. He adds the importance of WITEP's contribution to the future should not be underestimated. When you, look, when you listen to some of the testimonies of the trainees as you walk around, many of them are telling you that never before did they have a skill. They now have a skill. So we now move from no skill and no wage to low skill and low wage. And His sentiments are echoed by WITEP Chairman Chanda Gupta Supersad, who says the positive effects of the program extends not only to the graduates, but also to the economy. Just think about every trainee now have a skill. What that has done for the trainee, their, for their whole mentality, their character development, and what it has done for the family. So now they are very marketable trainees. And so we are contributing to the human resource development of the country. Granted that some of them will go on into further education, but eventually they will all um, occupy productive places in the workplace. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Sport is up. Stay with us. Petra Jazz continued their unbeaten streak in the Super 10 Basketball League on the weekend with a victory over UTT. The come-from-behind win was inspired by national point guard Pascal, who finished some profitable fast breaks, as you will see in this Wayne Cunningham report. In the first match of a doubleheader in the Super 10 Basketball League at the Southern Indoor Sports Arena in Pleasantville, San Fernando, JCW Quarters United fell to their second loss in 48 hours. After losing 103 to 77 to Valencia Heat on Saturday in Maloney, the Southerners were pipped by police on Sunday 93-92 in a very competitive match. For police, four players reached double figures. Ronald Winter led the way with 17. Philip Alexander had 16, while Dane Daniel and Jesse Hamilton added 15 each. For Quarters United, Kurt Watty led all scorers with 23 points. Luciano Sedeno supported with 20. And Clino Flery chipped in with 10. In Game 2, the talents of point guard Adrian Joseph and forward Aqua Pascal helped Guy Petro Jazz to their seventh consecutive win in as many matches. Jazz defeated the University of Trinidad and Tobago 90-70. UTT jumped out to a 23-16 first quarter lead and at halftime the university students were in control 39-29. But they were outscored 30-14 and fell behind for good. For Petro Jazz, Pascal scored 24 points and Joseph 23. For UTT, Lazaro Campbell led with 14. While Jeffrey Harris and Kerry Celestin netted 13 apiece. Men are now third on the 13 team table with 14 points, two behind leaders Caledonia Clippers and one adrift of UTT. But they have played two games less than their opponents who have lost two and three games respectively. Super 10 action continues on Thursday 
with a massive clash between former champions Dito Shakatak of Dan Kelly Village and Diego Martin All Stars, which will be preceded by a women's encounter between second place Colors and third place Quarters United. Wayne Cunningham, News for Sports. More news after the break. Stay with us. the law to drink and drive. When you are caught, you are liable to pay a fine of $8,000 or face up to three years imprisonment. Don't make this happen to you. Do not drink and drive. Crime affects everyone. So it's time for all of us to do our part. Join with us and get on board. In the fight against crime. Are you on board? This is my country and I'm on board. This is my country and I am on board. This is my country and I'm on board. Crime prevention is everybody's business and I am on board. A partnership is important to the police service. I'm on board. Get on board. I am on board. We are on board in this fight against crime. I am Mangal Patata. I am on board. So you report, we support, and I am on board. I am a fisherman. Crime prevention is also my business. I am on board. I am Imam Hamza Muhammad. Crime prevention is also my business. So me, I am on board. We are partnering with the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service in the fight against crime. Because crime prevention is everybody's business. Join us. I join with the police in their fight against crime. Are you on board? We are yeah. all on board. It stands 30 feet tall on the ground, adorned with bright, beautiful colors. It looks like a heavenly temple of sorts, but the large structure is called a Taj. The Jose structure was unveiled at the National Museum and Art Gallery by the Ministry of Diversity and Social Integration in collaboration with the Arts Coalition. With this project, the Artist Coalition of Trinidad and Tobago has begun to build something monumental that should and could outlive us all. They have begun the task of building memory and thus building citizenship and identity. Delivering remarks. Says the Taj is the enchantment of Trinidad and Tobago. It is about the magic of this place. It begins with the magic of this island uh, where bones were found in San Fernando, just off San Fernando, the Banwari Man, which establishes our civilization here, 7,000 years old, the oldest human civilization recorded in this part of the world. It begins with the magic of, of, of that journey, of that claiming of the land, of that human interaction, and whatever magic that, that bestowed upon this place. He says there is something divine in the space that has enabled Trinidad and Tobago to be the festival nation that it is and to be the people that we are. What we have is genius individuals who have persisted because of their own individual memories in particular forms and because of them they have brought these gifts to us through the centuries and em embroidered it with other gifts. So the Jose Taj, the Trinidad Jose Taj is a mixture of Ramlila effigies and um, African mask and all of that with traditional Jose Tajas as well as the carnival costumes are Jose Tajas mixed with Ramlila effigies, mixed with African masking. Each one of those artifacts, we do three large artifacts in Trinidad and Tobago, Ramlila effigies, Jose Tajas and King and Queen of Carnival costumes. Addressing the gathering at the unveiling ceremony, 
Minister of Diversity and Social Integration, the Honorable Roger Samuel, made a call for the return of old-time traditions. I remember one Calypsonian singing, saying that, that we must record how much ounces it takes to make a tenor pan and, 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 and the art of making it. And, and we have to record those things so that it, it is not lost because so many of our, uh, our, our traditions are being lost. Uh, uh, people buy a kite now when in my days there was nothing as buying a kite, but there was the art and the glory of producing your own kite and cutting up your mother sheet and, 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 and stealing flour uh, to make you know, glue and, and, and making sure it's boiled. And there was an art how long to, to boil it for and how to stir it so that it doesn't you know, overboil. And there was the art of all these things that I grew up with. He said all these things need to be penned properly so to ensure it is not lost and its legacy lives on. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barreto. Thank you for joining us.